Tell me what it was you wanted to do after the war, Lawrence. Once I am released from the Allied internment camp, I wish to forget this verdammt war. Sail far from here. Find some place, some land to own, somewhere to settle down, and then maybe become a farmer. What about your family? My family? Sadly to say, they were all killed during the fire bombings. Sorry for your loss. Yeah. My family perished in Hamburg. One of my friends, they are scattered in pieces everywhere, from African to Bushland to the European continent to Deutschland. This verdant war has taken everything I have loved and has left me to be here now. Tell me about your life before the war, Herr Lartz. Before the war, I was a part-time teacher of the Kinder and a village near Cologne and uh, a part-time university student. Interesting. Sounds like it was uh, very busy. Yeah, it was a good life in happier times. I, I was teaching uh, general elementary subjects, uh, reading, writing, and uh, attending the same university. And at that time, I wanted to become a full-time artist. It's an admirable profession. So you joined the Wehrmacht, and what made you give that all up? The Wehrmacht, it was a patriotic thing to do. Besides, uh, there was war. One didn't get much choice living in Germany. One Volk, one people, one Führer, one leader, a duty. To kick and guns, to serve for Deutschland, to serve the Fatherland. Now, looking back, I I think it would have been best to stay behind. I guess I suppose it's okay if I say that now. Well, your file says that you fought multiple campaigns all over in Europe. Ah. Do you care to talk about any of those? Do you uh, carry a half of American cigarettes? I, I seem to be out of my own. Yes. Ah, Alaska Zeidman. Ah, English tobacco. It's a good, yeah. Ah, uh, shut up. Uh, do you have a light? Ah, uh, Billy Danka. You know, during the war, my men and I, we fought, we fought more of these than bullets. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it would be best if you ask me something else. Perhaps. 
outside, cigarettes or women, film. Now that this nightmare is behind us, perhaps we will have the days again. I'm the more Ja. Los! 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 Eagle one, Eagle two! At least help back that bird! On you! Hold on! 
Devil Low, what is it that you want to do after the war? I just want to return to mention my home and live with a quiet life. And your family, what about them? My parents died in a bombing raid in 1942. My two cousins were killed in action. And my wife, well, my wife, she is waiting for me outside Munich. Tell me what you did before the war. I was but a civil servant. I maintained the city's water system. Why did you decide to join the army? My duty and love for my country. Many were given the privilege to serve. I decided to join the Wehrmacht Mountain Troop. There were uh, many campaigns throughout the war. Ja? Can you tell me more about them? It's true. We fought our hover, the Carpathians, France, the Caucasus, the partisans in Yugoslavia, and Greece. I was part of the detachment to raise the flag on Elvis. We even had plans to land in Britain. Did you know that? Yes, uh, Operation Sea Lion. Yeah, but we never did. I'm glad it's over. Tell me more about the uh, partisan groups you knew of.
Stubbs for uh, senior sergeant, and NCO. So what did you do before the war? Before the war, I did nothing. Nothing of any birth. I uh, joined the army, then transferred to the 5th Gebetsiegas. Which are medals. How did you earn them? The Iron Cross came from Nancy, France. I killed five Americans with a grenade. The war wound was from the Eastern Front. I was shot in the leg. For that, they sent me back to Berlin, where I stayed for six weeks. What did you do after that? We were redeployed to the Alps. We were the rest. I suppose so. It was much easier than fighting the Soviets. Uh, even though we were near the end of our strength. Cautious fighters, you Americans. I'll take that as a compliment. Tell me about your injury. How are you injured?
Such as Viva Steady, Viva Relentless. And that's how they came back to Berlin. So, uh, what do you do now that the war is over? When you go back home? I would like to get married, start a family eventually, but uh, for now, I would like to rejoin the army. It is my calling. Re enlist? I hope it's a very long time before we go to war again. They're saying this is the most destructive war in human history, and those are just the early reports. There will always be forced to fight, Mr. Arthridge. I do not think it will be a long wait. Let me ask Excuse yeah. me, Mr. Aldrich. Can I cut the interview short? All POWs are required for a body count. Of course, Sergeant. Thank you. Thompson, hope you'll be willing to continue again. I look forward to it. Are you the Major? That's right. Major Tobias Wright, at your service. Has something happened? <laughs> yes, it appears that two of our German guests have decided to go missing. I suppose they don't like our cooking. But don't worry. We'll get the bastards back. Do you mind if I come along? My interviews at Mrs. Finnegan. Journalist for the UN, eh? Yes, Frank Aldrich. Well, Frank, I certainly wouldn't mind for the company, but uh, I can't in good conscience guarantee your safety. You do understand that, correct? Understood. Good. You'll need this, then. This is Will. Bonds, let's go. escaped. Two as far as I can tell. They cut through the south wire. We know where they're headed. I have an idea. They're on foot so they haven't gone very far. If they're smart, they'll have split up and gone in two separate directions. If we're lucky and they stay together, I suspect we'll be in for a very short ride. I'll have to ask you to wait here, please. Look, lads, not going first. Barnes, stay left. Royce with me.
Good job, Frank. You caught one. Lost this, though. They must have gotten past you. But he didn't get past you. Do you know where the other one is? Nope. Not here. There's a small cabin not far from here. Perhaps he went there. Barnes, you and Royce take the right. Right. Come with me from the front. You think he's in there? Mind if I talk to him? All yours. The war is over. Why run? The soldiers at the camp were scheduled to be released. To be released from who? Hmm? The Soviets? To be stuck inside some Golik? That's hell. Released home. To your bloody fatherland. Royce Barnes, get him out of here. Load him up in the jeep. He's liable to bleed out here. Eventful day, eh? So he really didn't think they were going to be sent home. Where'd he get that idea? Perhaps a paranoid, considering what their own government did. Stupid notion. War's over with. All he had to do was stop fighting. You will make me look good in that book of yours, won't you, Frank? I think you got your own chapter today, Major. Erbron, what would you like to do now that the war has ended? Well, uh, I want to return to Austria to my fiancé, maybe take her to the Alps instead of there. And your family? What would you, uh, like to do? Have you heard from them? Well, uh, my parents and sister have survived. They wrote me to tell me they had moved to Linz. My brother died in the war, along with my cousin. I'm sorry about that. And were you attending university when the war began? No, no. Uh, I was a tourist guide in the Alps. Yeah, uh, my uncle, he got me a job at Davos. It's a wonderful place. <laughs> so I've heard. So is that why your English is so good? Uh, actually, no. Uh, my father, who was Austrian, uh, was captured during the Great War. After the war was over, he married my mother, who was English. I was raised bilingual. So, why join the Wehrmacht? Uh, well, uh, I joined the Alpine Corps because I've always loved the mountains and climbing. As for joining the Germans, uh, they've been our allies in the last war, and it was my duty to defend Austria. Well, your file says that you fought in Poland, Norway, and Russia. Do you mind if I ask you some questions about those war experiences? Mm, not at all. Go ahead. What is the one thing you remember most vividly about that? I deal with uh, a lot of guilt. 
my brother fought alongside me. He was killed right in front of me. Stab with the bayonet. Then I could have saved him. If I had just called out or fired a second sooner. We we, we prayed together. I, I sang hymns to him and It took him so long to die. I... I apologize, I... I didn't... That's quite all right. Were you ever wounded in the war? Mm -hmm, many times. What is your opinion of the Allied soldiers? Uh, is he American and British? Uh, I found them to be a good man. We have a lot in common, actually. They tend to rely on air power, on artillery, a little too much. Whereas we tend to rely on tactics. Otherwise, good men. As for the Soviets, inhumane scum, looting, burning, and raping all across Poland and Germany. You know, we could stop them if we worked together. Yeah, you Americans and us. We could tear that Russian bear to pieces. Well, I'm afraid that won't happen. As much as you may dislike them, the Russians are our allies, and we would not have won the war without them. Hmm. So tell me, how were you captured? It was at the end of the war. In Italy.
as they tramp. Shall we go inside? Sure. The Germans should have a flair for the dramatic. It's quite enjoyable, don't you think? Wait. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, my lady. Thank you, sir. Of course, ma'am. So, I suppose you'd like to hear my life story? Absolutely, uh, as much as you would uh, like to tell. First, I'd like to ask you a question, Frank. Nicholas's note, where did you get it? Uh, a friend of his gave it to me. I'm sorry, but the man they said it belonged to is believed to be dead. He is dead. He had helped me escape when the Gestapo had found me out. Is that when the Gestapo put you on their hit list? You're getting ahead of the story. Of course, uh, from the beginning then. Are you familiar with the Red Orchestra? No, I'm afraid not. Good. While living in the Alps as a young woman, I fell under the influence of the Roten Drei, the Red Three. It was led by a man we called Dora, who worked very closely with a certain spy ring, passing ultra information from the British to the Soviets. It was all very intriguing, 
and the stealing of Ultra was a very lucrative business. Before long, I was sent to France, which was occupied by the Nazis at that time, and uh, worked as an agent for the Red Orchestra cell there. So is that when the SS caught up with you? You're correct. I was caught with 10 kilograms of hexogen. However, I persuaded them to hire me. And they trusted you? <laughs> Not immediately, no. They had me passing misinformations to the Allies in exchange for my life at first. But before long, the Abwehr had put me officially on the bankroll. It was during my time with them that I was reconnected to my old friends at the Red Orchestra. The Berlin Cell was a motley group made up of Germans, Jews and an American. It was there I first met Nicholas. We did good work there, not just passing Ultra to the Americans, but for the German people as well. <laughs> Sometimes it was hard to tell if we an espionage ring or a humanitarian group. <laughs> humanitarian group, you say? Yes, like your American Underground Railroad, if you will. Interesting. So what happened after that? We were discovered. The Trapper group had been found out. They attempted to warn us, but it was too late. Our leader was arrested, and the Schutzstaffel had raided our safe house. If it wasn't for Nicholas, I wouldn't have made it out either. They were all arrested and executed. Those who had positions in the German military were killed quietly and later reported missing in action. A public death would have been counterproductive. So why did you agree to tell me all of this? Everyone I ever knew is dead and no one knows about it. Everything they've ever done, no one would know unless I told them. They would have lived and died for nothing, and they deserve so much better than that. I see. What did you do? My upwork contract was no good. The Nazis didn't trust me after that. <laughs> Disguises got me where paperwork couldn't. Germany had gotten too hot. France as well. I escaped by foot over the Pyrenees Mountains into Spain. It was in the winter of 42. That's quite a journey. Why didn't you just go back to Switzerland? Oh, I did. Eventually. But the war wasn't over for me yet. I trained and worked for the American OSS and the British SIS. I have to admit I enjoyed it very much. I even returned to France when the Allies invaded. What did you do when the war ended? I received awards. <laughs> Can you believe it, huh? From nearly every government, except from Germany, quite understandable. After that, I returned back home to Switzerland. I've been able to live quite comfortably. Are you still working now? No. No, I'm retired. <laughs> I have a bit of notoriety now. No one wants to hire a well-known spy. It's bad for business. <laughs> so what are you doing in London? Well, um, MI6 was good to me. I'm uh, visiting some old friends. I think that's all the questions that I had. This is going to be a wonderful piece. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Of course. Frank. Mademoiselle.
మీరు ఏంటి సార్ Agent Verna, your cravat is shrift. Besser. Besser. Danke, Obersturmführer. Generalmajor Oster erwartet mich. Ja, natürlich. Eins, eins, fünf, vier, acht, vier, null. Wir haben nicht viel Zeit. Der Lama. Thank you. 